Welcome back! This is the second video in the Curve Tracer series. The focus of this video is going to be BJTs. Those are bipolar junction transistors. They are by far the most common transistor to this day. We're going to look at how to find the AC and DC current gain. When you first test a transistor, whether you know the characteristics or you don't, you have to make sure that you're careful setting this instrument up because this instrument will destroy transistors. Remember, it has a 200 volt range that can source up to an amp. If you have your dissipation limiting resistor set wrong and you have your peak volts adjusted too high, you will fry the transistor. So you always want to start with all the controls at a minimum. And Tech actually describes this in the user manual. So I set my peak volts at zero set my dissipation limiting resistor to the max, which is 100K. I set my peak volts range to the 20 volt range. And I have my polarity switch to positive, which is for an NPN transistor. Now, if you know it's a PNP transistor, you could stick this to PNP already, but we don't know what this transistor is. So I'm gonna leave it in NPN. I've got my base step selector to the lowest current per step as possible, which is one microamp. And I'm gonna turn my steps maximum number of steps down to four. I've got my polarity here to positive going steps because I believe this is an NPN transistor. If it was a PNP transistor, I can always switch to negative going steps and that will draw my steps upside down from the top corner of the screen instead of from the bottom corner up. I got my vertical and horizontal at a mid position, one volt horizontal, one milliamp vertical. So I'm going to go ahead and flick this toggle switch to the B side because that's where my transistor is. And I'm going to go ahead and increase the voltage here. You can see not much is happening. And that's because we're limiting the total amount of current that can pass through the transistor with the dissipation limiting resistor knob. So we're going to switch it down a couple ranges because we know that the maximum collector current viewed on this display right now is 10 milliamps. So obviously most transistors can handle 10 milliamps of collector current, so we're fairly safe. That's a very low value. We're not at 100 milliamps or, or more. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this down until we see some curves. So we're at 10K of uh, dissipation limiting resistor value. And you can see the steps are really small. You can't really see much. I could increase the vertical sensitivity here but you're so low into the noise, you can actually see the ca the capacitance of the collector here is actually becoming visible. But let's keep our settings to the 1 milliamp. We want to see that 10 milliamps up there. So what we can do now is we can change the base steps. We'll go up two ranges. We'll start increasing our voltage. You see nothing really happens unless I really increase the voltage because, once again, this is set too high. Back off the voltage a little bit, and you can lower this dissipation limiting resistor value until you get the curves that you want. So you can see there, we've got some nice curves. But we're not up at 10 milliamps yet. And that's because we're only viewing four curves. There's four steps. One, two, three, four. The bottom is zero. So we can go ahead and increase the number of steps until we get to the top there, and you can actually Increase the peak volts now. I'm at 14 volts. Here you can see it's a beautiful display. We have all of our curves displayed here. And uh, that's kind of how I go about figuring out uh, the parameters of the transistor. If it was an MPN transistor, it wouldn't look like this right now in these settings. You would notice that the curves were drawing all weird. And then what you can do is you can flip to the PNP and it'll draw the curves the other way around. Same thing with this. You see, if I had this on the wrong polarity of step generator, it won't do anything. Because that's not how NPN transistors work. You need a positive voltage in respect to the emitter. So now you can see we have our curves. Now you might ask, what does this mean? What are we looking at? And why is this important? Well, in the vertical axes here, we have collector milliamps. In the horizontal axis here, we have collector volts. This is really useful for finding the gain of the transistor because each one of these curves is a base current step. So now we can take what base current we're at 
and you divide the collector current by that, and that will give you your DC gain. So you need to know what uh, environment your transistor is going to be in. And to do that, you most often draw a load line. Now, a load line, you need a couple pieces of information. You need your maximum collector voltage, you need your maximum collector current, and you need your Q point or your quiescent point, which is going to be your idle uh, mode for the transistor where it's going to sit with no signal applied. So once you've decided on what the parameters are of the circuit, you can actually use them with the curve tracer and actually find what the Q point will be and what bias current you need in order to have the transistor at that Q point. So let's say um, my circuit has a maximum uh, collector voltage of 10 volts, it has a maximum collector current of 5 milliamps, and it has a Q point of 5 volts on the collector. So we can go ahead and scale accordingly. So with the vertical here, I'm going to set my maximum, my full scale deflection, so the top of the graticule is going to be um, 5 milliamps. Remember, it's 10, 10 divisions. My horizontal, I'm going to leave it at 1 volt. I'm going to bring back my peak volts until I have 10 volts. I'm going to adjust my step zero. Now this is very important. When I push the zero volt switch, which I discussed in the last video, it's going to show me where zero is. Now to me that looks like zero, but to the camera it doesn't. So I'm just going to adjust it a little bit. Okay, perfect. And now let me just check the vertical, or horizontal, sorry, that's pretty good. So now I can set my step zero, so I ground it, that's where zero is, and I can vary my zero step. If I go too far, it takes it all with it. We don't want that. We just want it to be at zero. And you can toggle back and forth until you get that. It's important to have that before you actually do any measurements. So now we can scale it back. So we have our maximum collector voltage using the peak volt switch. Now we're going to set our maximum collector current using the dissipation limiting resistor. Remember, that's just a fancy term for collector load resistor. So if I decrease it, you'll see I've brought it down a range. It's already kind of in there. Now if I want more resolution, I can change the current per step. So we're going to change the base current step down to 2 microamps. It was set up at 5 microamps there. And you can see that's pretty close. And if I increase my families here, my steps slash family switch, you'll notice that there's my, my 5 milliamps, roughly. It's not perfect because obviously I don't want to give any more voltage because then it's going to affect the angle of my line a little bit. So now you can find your Q point. You know our Q point's at 5 volts of collector voltage which is right here. If I go up here, then you'll see there's our Q point where it intersects with that 45 degree line there. Now obviously I've picked these values to give us a very clean display and easy to read and easy maths. Um, real life may vary. Um, you might get some really odd values that'll give you a really weird curve that's not a 45 degree line like that. Anyway, there's our Q point. It's right there. So if we wanted to find what the base current required to put us at that Q point is, we simply count from the zeroth step, which we set properly. Remember, there's zero, and there's our steps. So we know it's two microamps a step. So we we'll count the steps. One step, two step, three step, four step, five steps, times the base steps electric switch, which is two microamps, gives you ten microamps. So you know you need 10 microamps of base current to put you at your Q point of uh, 2.5 milliamps at 5 volts of collector voltage. Finding the gain of a BJT transistor is actually quite easy. It's not as difficult as it seems. It might be daunting at first when you're, when you're first learning about transistors. You might go, oh, what's that mysterious uh, HFE number I see on the data sheet? And how did they find that? 
It's very, very easy and simple to find, especially when you have a curve tracer. There's two kinds of gain that you have to know, and that are the only two kinds of gain that are important. You have the AC current gain, denoted by the small f and the small e, and you have the DC current gain, which is the large f and the large e. There's a big difference between the two of these, especially in the way that you find them. AC gain is the difference in collector current divided by the difference in base current, while the DC static gain, as it's called, is the collector current divided by the base current. And the reason this is AC is you can tell. AC is a waveform that changes over time. So in order to find the appropriate gain for that, you're going to take a difference in the collector current and divide it by the difference in the same region, and I'll show how, uh, of the base current to see how much wiggle on the base gives you a bigger wiggle on the output. Um, and how much, and it'll, that'll give you the AC gain. So we'll start with the DC gain, because that's the easiest one to find. So now we know where our operating point is, and our operating point is here. So we take the 2.5 collector milliamps, and you divide it by 10 microamps. Remember, there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 microamps, 2 microamps per step. And that gives you 250. So you know that the DC current gain, the static gain, um, is 250. So when you do your DC bias calculations and you want to know the uh, how much bias current you need to give you a particular collector current, it will be a gain of 250 approximately. To find the AC current gain, we have to pick two points. It's easiest to pick two points, one point above and one point below your Q point. So we know our Q point is 2.5 milliamps. So we can select a point above and a point below. And it's easiest to pick a, a one of the base steps. So we have a base step here and a base step here. Uh, we are 0.5 collector milliamps per division. So 0.5. 1, 1 1.5, 2, so we have 2 as our lower one, 2.5, and 3, 3 as our upper one. Now, 3 subtract 2 is 1, and now we have to find, so that's the difference between in the collector current, and now we have to find the difference um, in base current, and we know that each step is 2 microamps, so we go 1 microamp, 2 microamp. Between these two points, there is a difference of 2 microamps. And if you divide uh, 1 milliamp by 4 microamps, you get, surprise, surprise, a gain of 250. Now, there are some cases where you might get a different gain for the AC gain, um, but that all depends on, on the scenario. In our case, we got the same gain as the DC current gain. But often on, on data sheets, they specify two different ranges. And they'll say the DC current gain is from, let's say, 300 to 500. And they'll say the AC current gain is uh, from 250 to 400 or something like that. So there are differences in between them. But in our scenario, it actually turned out that they were exactly the same. I hope you found this interesting and you learned something. And I uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video, which will be about FETs and transconductance.